chasing the police every single day. United States District Court, Middle District of Florida, Fort Myers Division, Andrew B. Sheets, individually, Plaintiff, V. City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Defendant, Case No. 2 colon 19 CV 484 SBC MRM, Plaintiff's Memorandum of Law in Opposition to, Defendant's Motion to Dismiss Amended Complaint, Comes now the plaintiff Andrew B. Sheets, the plaintiff, by and through the undersigned counsel, pursuant to local rule 3.01, b, and hereby responds in opposition to defendant city of Punta Gorda, Florida's motion to dismiss amended complaint. Document 22, motion, as follows. Memorandum of Law. I. Introduction. 1. On July 12th. 2019, plaintiff filed his two-count complaint, document 1, complaint. Two defendant moved to dismiss the complaint on August 26, 2019. Document 22. 3. On September 8, 2019, plaintiff filed his two-count amended complaint, doc. 23, amended complaint. 4. Count I alleges that section 15-48, E. Punta Gorda Code, violates the First Amendment, both facially and as applied to plaintiff. 5. Count 2 alleges that Section 15-48, E. Punta Gorda Code, violates the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment, both facially and as applied to plaintiff. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 1 of 20 page ID 174. 2. 6 on September 23, 2019, defendant filed its motion to dismiss amended. Complaint, document 25. 7 in relevant part, defendant argues that count I fails, because the ordinance at Issue is a lawful, reasonable restriction on access to limited public forum. Motion at 1 to 2. 8 defendant argues that count 2 fails, because plaintiff has no constitutionally protected right to ignore the ordinary conditions in which its limited public fora have been made available to the general public. ID at 2. 9 defendant attached the entire ordinance at issue, Ordinance No. 1872-17 to its motion and seeks judicial notice of same. 10. Because the amended complaint states a valid claim upon which relief may be granted, defendant's motion should be denied. 2. Standard of review. Defendant's motion is filed pursuant to Rule 12, B, 6, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. As the court well knows, you enter Rule 8, A. 2. Of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, a complaint must contain a short and plain statement of the claim showing that the pleader is entitled to relief. Federal R. Civ. P. 8. A. 2. This obligation requires more than labels and conclusions, and a formulaic recitation of the elements of a cause of action will not do. Bell Atlantic Corp. v. Twombly, 550 U.S. 544, 555, 127 S.C.T. 1955, 167 L.Ed 2D 929, 2007, citation omitted. In addition, to survive a motion to dismiss under Rule 12, B. 6, of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, the factual Allegations must be plausible and must be enough to raise a right to relief. Above the speculative level. ID at 555, see also Edwards v. Prime Incorporated, 602 F.3D. 1276, 1291, 11th Sir 2010. Like its counterpart above, Rule 12, b. 6, requires. More than unadorned, 
the defendant unlawfully harmed me accusations. Ashcroft v. Iqbal, 556 U.S. 662, 678, 129 S.C.T. 1937, 173 L.Ed. 2D 868, 2009. Citations omitted. Sieg Miller v. School B.D. Of Collier C.T.Y., Case No. 2 colon 15 CV 87 FTM 38 DNF, 2015 WL 360-4608 at Asterisk 2, MDFLA June 7, 2015, Chappelle, J. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM Document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 2 of 20 page ID 175. 3. While a court is generally limited to reviewing the face of the complaint to determine the sufficiency of a plaintiff's claims, a court may consider documents attached to a motion to dismiss if the attached documents are 1. Central to plaintiff's claims and 2. The authenticity of the documents are not challenged. Horsley v. Felt 304F.3D 1125, 1134, 11th Sir 2002. Levitt v. Iovini, Case No. 2 colon 18 CV 36 FTM 99 MRM, 2018 WL 410, 7974 at asterisk 3, MDFLA August 29th. 2018, Chappelle, J. 3. Argument. A Plaintiff's First Amendment Claim. 1. Plaintiff's audio and video recording is protected by the First Amendment. As alleged in the complaint, Plaintiff, a citizen and resident of Punta Gorda, walked into Punta Gorda City Hall on December 20, 2018. Amended Complaint, at 4, 15. At the time, he was unobtrusively audio and video recording public employees within the city hall building without their consent and over their objection id at 16 to 18 37 plaintiff's alleged conduct violated the ordinance at issue but otherwise plaintiff was complying with all federal state and local statutes regulations and ordinances id at 16 to 17 it is firmly established that the First Amendment's aegis extends further than the text's proscription on laws abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, and encompasses a range of conduct related to the gathering and dissemination of information. As the Supreme Court has observed, the First Amendment goes beyond protection of the press and the self-expression of individuals to prohibit government from limiting the stock of information from which members of the public may draw. First National Bank v. Bellotti, 435 U.S. 765, 783, 98 S.C.T. 1407, 55 L.Ed. 2D 707, 1978, see also Stanley v. Georgia, 394 U.S. 557, 564, 89 S.C.T. 1243, 22 L.Ed. 2D 542, 1969, it is, well established that the Constitution protects the right to receive information and ideas. An important corollary to this interest in protecting the stock of public information is that T here is an undoubted right to gather news from any source by means within the law. Hutchins v. KQED Incorporated, 438 U.S. 1, 11, 98 S.C.T. 2588, 57 L.Ed. 2D 553, 1978. Quoting Brandsburg v. Hayes, 408 U.S. 665, 681 to 82, 92 S.C.T. 2646, 33 L.Ed. 2D. 626, 1972. 
Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 3 of 20 page ID 176. 4. Gilk v. Cuniff, 655 F.3D 78, 82, 1st Sir 2011. Plaintiff's audio and video recording, as alleged. In the complaint, is protected speech under the First Amendment, and defendant tacitly concedes as much. See motion at 3, quoting Cornelius v. NAACP Legal DEF and EDUC Fund Incorporated. 473 U.S. 788, 799, 105 S.C.T. 3439, 3447, 87 L.ed. 2D 567, 1985, even protected speech is not equally permissible in all places at all times. Nevertheless, the scope of protection due to plaintiff is largely based on the forum in which he was engaged in such protected speech. C. Henderson v. The City of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 960 F. Sub. 1292, 1297, M.D. Tennessee, 1997. While T. He greatest amount of protection is afforded to traditional public forums such as parks, streets, and sidewalks. Extensive protection is also afforded to certain types or subjects of expression found in a limited public forum. ID, brackets added, finding that the city of Murfreesboro City Hall was a limited public forum. Two the parties agree that defendant's city hall is a limited public forum. Defendant argues, and plaintiff agrees, that the areas in which plaintiff audio and video recorded on December 20, 2018 within Defendant's City Hall are limited public fora. Motion at 3. Ironically, the parties also generally agree on the standard that this court must apply when evaluating the ordinance. ID, restrictions on access to limited public forum must only be I. Reasonable and 2. Viewpoint neutral, citing Christian Legal SOCYV Martinez, 561 U.S. 661, 679, 130 S.C.T. 2971, 2984, 177 L.ed 2D 838, 2010. However, as explained below, the ordinance is neither viewpoint neutral nor reasonable. 3. The ordinance grants city employees unbridled discretion to prohibit audio and video recording, rendering the ordinance viewpoint discriminatory. Under the unbridled discretion doctrine, Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 4 of 20 page ID 177. 5. In the amended complaint, plaintiff alleges, Section 15-48, E, Punta Gorda Code, is viewpoint discriminatory, because it provides defendant and its public employees with unbridled discretion to provide recording consent to some visitors, while denying or withholding recording consent for other visitors, without providing any safeguards or guidelines whatsoever. Amended complaint, at 54. In its motion, defendant argues, there is simply nothing in the ordinance which turns on the viewpoint of the person who is recording. Stated another way, it does not matter why a person is recording. Therefore, it is viewpoint neutral and not content based. Motion, at 5. Emphasis in motion. Defendant is mistaken. First, the ordinance is indeed content based, but that in itself does not render the ordinance unconstitutional. Historically, content-based restrictions on speech were presumptively unconstitutional. See Rosenberger v. Rector and Visitors of University of Virginia, 515. U.S. 819, 828, 
115s.ct2510-2516, ld 2d700-1995, it is axiomatic that the government may not regulate speech based on its substantive content or the message it conveys. At times, the Supreme Court applied the prohibition of content discrimination to its forum analysis. We have invoked the prohibition against content discrimination to invalidate government restrictions on access to public forums. See, example Kerry v. Brown. 447 U.S. 455, 100 S.C.T. 2286, 65 L.Ed 2D 263, 1980, Grain v. City of Rockford, 408 U.S. 104, 92 S.C.T. 2294, 33 L.Ed 2D 222, 1972, Police. Department of Chicago v. Mosley, 408 U.S. 92, 92 S.C.T. 2286, 33 L.Ed 2D 212. 1972, we also have relied on this prohibition to strike down restrictions on access to a limited public forum. See, example Widmer v. Vincent, 454 U.S. 263, 102. S.C.T. 269, 70 L.Ed 2D 440, 1981. Finally, we have applied the doctrine of content. Neutrality to government regulation of protected speech in cases in which no restriction of access to public property was involved. See, example consolidated. Edison Company v. Public Service Commission, 447 U.S. 530, 100 S.C.T. 2326, 65. L.Ed 2D 319, 1980, Erdnoznik v. City of Jacksonville, 422 U.S. 205, 95 S.C.T. 2268, 45 L.Ed 2D 125, 1975. See also Metromedia Incorporated v. City of San Diego, 453. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 5 of 20 page ID 178. 6. U.S. 490, 513, 515, 516, 101 S.C.T. 2882, 2895, 2896, 2897, 69 L.Ed 2D 800. 1981, Plurality Opinion. Perry EDUC Association v. Perry Local Educators Association, 460 U.S. 37, 103 S.C.T. 948, 74 L.Ed 2D 794. 1983. Content-based laws Those that target speech based on its communicative content are presumptively unconstitutional and may be justified only if the government proves that they are narrowly tailored to serve compelling state interests. Read v. Town of Gilbert, Arizona, 135 S.C.T. 2218, 2227, 192 L.Ed 2D 236, 2015. Regulations of speech that cannot be justified without reference to the content of the regulated speech are content-based. ID. Here, the ordinance provides that audio and video recording is presumptively lawful only if it captures the following content, a publicly noticed, public meeting in the city council chambers, conference rooms, and other locations. See section 15-48, E, Punta Gorda Code. All other audio and video recordings. 
within city property are unlawful unless prior consent is obtained from everyone who would be audio or video recorded. The ordinance at issue here is classically, facially content discriminatory. Recently, the Supreme Court has retreated from the prohibition on content discrimination. In connection with public forum analysis. As stated above, today, restrictions on access to limited public forum must only be reasonable and viewpoint neutral. See Barrett v. Walker CTY. School DIST, 872 F.3 D 1209, 1225. 11th Sir 2017, content-based discrimination is permitted in a limited public forum if it is viewpoint neutral and reasonable in light of the forum's purpose. As alleged in the amended complaint, the ordinance vests city employees with unbridled discretion to permit or prohibit audio and video recording within city property. While the ordinance does not specifically identify government employees as those who are empowered. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 6 of 20 page ID 179. 7. To grant or withhold recording consent, government employees work in most areas of the limited. Public fora that are at issue herein, and defendant concedes that the ordinance was designed, at least in part, to prevent the audio and video recordings of city employees. On December 20, 2018, plaintiff recorded only two individuals in the city clerk's office, as depicted in Exhibit B, to the amended complaint. Both individuals were government employees, and both individuals refused to provide consent to recording. Amended complaint, at 37 to 40. As applied to plaintiff, government employees were the sole individuals from whom plaintiff needed consent to record, and they were the sole individuals who refused to grant such consent. Perhaps the plainest example of an unconstitutional grant of unbridled discretion is a law that gives a government official power to grant permits but that provides no standards by which the official's decision must be guided. Barrett, 872 F.3 D at 1221. In Barrett, the 11th. Circuit explained. In these circumstances, the official can grant or deny a permit for any reason she wishes. Such a grant of unconstrained power is unconstitutional under the First Amendment for two reasons, first, it creates an incentive for speakers to self-censor in hopes of being granted a permit, and second, it is difficult for courts to determine whether an official standardless permit decision was impermissibly based on content or viewpoint. See Lakewood, 486 U.S. at 757 to 59, 108 S.C.T. 2138. IDT he unbridled discretion doctrine applies in a limited public forum. ID at 1226, citing Child Evangelism Fellowship of MD, Inc. v. Montgomery CTY. PUBSCHS, 457F.3D376, 386 87. 4th Sir 2006. In the instant case, we have an ordinance that conditions the lawfulness of audio and video recording on one's ability first to obtain consent to record from those being recorded. In its motion, defendant argues that Exhibit B to the amended complaint illustrates that plaintiff was harassing and threatening, and that plaintiff's audio and video recording otherwise. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 7 of 20 page ID 180. 8. Disrupted the work of city government and threatened the security and privacy of city employees. Motion, at 4 to 5. Aside from defendant's false characterization of Exhibit B to the amended. Complaint. A principal problem with the ordinance is that it doesn't proscribe only threatening or 
disruptive recording. Instead, it bans all audio and video recording, unless consent is obtained from those being recorded. Such consent is not granted on condition that the recording be non-threatening and non-disruptive. Instead, consent is granted entirely on the unbridled discretion of those being recorded. In Atlanta Journal, we applied the unbridled discretion doctrine because of the risk that the airport's unrestrained permitting official would covertly engage in viewpoint discrimination, which was impermissible in a non-public forum, such as the airport. Limited public fora likewise do not tolerate viewpoint. Discrimination, see Good News Club, 533 US at 106-07, 121S.CT 2093, so the unbridled discretion doctrine can serve the same purpose in a limited public forum that it serves in a non-public forum, combating the risk of unconstitutional viewpoint discrimination. Barrett, 872F.3D at 1226, citing Atlanta Journal and Constitution v. City of Atlanta Department of Aviation, 322F.3D 1298, 11th Sir 2003. At this stage, plaintiff has stated a plausible claim that the ordinance unconstitutionally vests government employees with unbridled discretion to grant or withhold consent to audio and video record them. This grant of unbridled discretion poses an intolerable risk that government employees will covertly discriminate against those with whose viewpoint they disagree. Accordingly, the ordinance should be deemed to be viewpoint discriminatory. For the ordinance is unreasonable. Additionally, the ordinance is unreasonable. Defendant's defense of the ordinance is hard to follow. At once, defendant claims that unconsented audio and video recording within city property is disruptive to the orderly conduct of city business, but defendant entirely ignores the fact that defendant itself engages in unconsented recording within their property every day. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 8 of 20 page ID 181. 9. See amended complaint, at 47. The ordinance does not proscribe disruptive recordings, and it does not proscribe threatening recordings, whatever that is. The ordinance proscribes unconsented audio and video recordings, and it renders such recordings presumptively unlawful. Unless and until consent of the recorded is obtained. Defendant's effort to equate unconsented recordings with disruptive and threatening. Recordings is illogical. The ordinance does, after all, permit unconsented recordings during publicly noticed, public meetings. Defendant implies that the city of Punta Gorda must simply accept and tolerate disruptive, unruly, and threatening audio and video recording activity if such activity is undertaken during publicly noticed, public meetings, as though the city has no constitutionally permissible authority to prohibit such activity. If unconsented recordings truly were always disruptive and threatening, then, the city would have sought to ban all unconsented recordings at all times on city property, but the city knows better. The city is empowered to proscribe disruptive and unruly recordings during public meetings, but it is not empowered to proscribe all unconsented recordings during public meetings. See Tisdale v. Gravid, 51. F.Sub.3D 1378, 1388 to 89, NDGA 2014. Rather than creating thoughtful, rational, and reasonable regulations of behavior for visitors to city property, defendant through its ordinance has burdened substantially more speech than is necessary to achieve defendant's purported objectives. That renders the ordinance unreasonable. Defendant would like its citizens to be able to audio and video record government employees only when the government is engaged in its highly choreographed 
publicly noticed. Public meetings. But, what happens when a city employee decides to show up to work? Inebriated. What happens when a city employee decides to sleep on the job while clocked in at work? What happens when a citizen suspects that government employees are engaged in Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 9 of 20 page ID 182. 10. Misfeasance or malfeasance while working within city property. Must a political journalist one, like plaintiff, first obtain the government employee's consent before recording them? Defendant. Through its ordinance says yes. This is nonsense. Gathering information about government officials in a form that can readily be disseminated to others serves a cardinal First Amendment interest in protecting and promoting the free discussion of governmental affairs. Mills v. Alabama. 384 U.S. 214, 218, 86 S.C.T. 1434, 16L.Ed 2D 484, 1966. Moreover, as the court has noted, a freedom of expression has particular significance with respect to government because IT is here that the state has a special incentive to repress opposition and often wields a more effective power of suppression. First National Bank 435 U.S. at 777 and 11, 98 S.C.T. 1407, Alteration in Original, Quoting. Thomas Emerson, Toward a General Theory of the First Amendment 9, 1966. Gilk, 655 F.3d at 82. The Court's Reasonableness Inquiry must be undertaken in light of the purpose of the Limited public forum. Defendant claims that the ordinance opens the city's facilities for the purpose of conducting legitimate public business with city officers or employees. Motion, at 4. Citing section 15-48, D, Punta Gorda Code. In practice, the city has opened its facilities also. For the purpose of disseminating information to the public, without requiring the public to actually interact with city officers or employees. See amended complaint, at 20, 21, 27, 28. See also amended complaint, at EXB defendant claims that it is challenged with maintaining a safe and orderly environment which is conducive to efficiently conducting such business. Motion, at 4, but the ordinance audio and video recording ban is irrelevant to this concern. Section 15-48, C, Punta Gorda Code, provides in relevant part as follows. The city manager shall also have the authority to develop and implement procedures to regulate and control public access within city-owned, controlled, and leased property to provide for the security and privacy of public visitors, to one in the amended complaint, plaintiff notes that he is a journalist and a credentialed member of the National Press Photographers Association, and that the vast majority of his published works consist of political advocacy that is critical of his elected government officials. Amended. Complaint, at 11 to 13. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 10 of 20 page ID 183. 11. Provide for the security and privacy of city employees and officers, and to minimize potential disruptions to the work of city government. Any person who engages in conduct that causes disruptions to the work of city government shall be deemed to no longer be present within the city-owned, controlled, or leased property on legitimate public business. Section 15-48, C, Punta Gorda Code. In other words, the ordinance addresses the city's concern for safety, security, privacy, efficiency, and a disruption-free environment by empowering the city manager to create regulations that specifically address those concerns. 
in audio and video recording ban addresses none of those concerns specifically. Importantly, while it is appropriate for the court to take judicial notice of defendants, claim to have the concerns and motivations cited in defendant's ordinance, it is not appropriate for the court to adjudge those concerns to be genuine or fact-based. See generally Hall v. Louisiana, Case No. 12-00657 Badge RLB, 2015 WL138-3532, MDLA March 23, 2015, Propriety of Taking Judicial Notice of Judicial and Legislative Findings Plaintiff disputes that defendant implemented an audio and video recording ban out of a genuine concern for the safety and security of its city employees. As alleged in the amended complaint, on December 20, 2018, the front doors to City Hall and the door from the public lobby to the city clerk's office were unlocked. Amended complaint, at 24. Access to defendant's City Hall building and to the City clerk's office was not conditioned upon plaintiff proceeding through a security checkpoint. Indeed, plaintiff did not interact with anyone inside City Hall until after he entered the city clerk's office. ID at 25. As a practical matter, if someone intends to criminally threaten, harass, disrupt, or otherwise harm city employees on city property, it stands to reason that the City would want an audio and video recording of such activity, so that the criminal could be prosecuted and punished. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 11 of 20 page ID 184. 12. Plaintiff also disputes that defendant implemented an audio and video recording ban out of a genuine concern for the privacy of its employees. If defendant truly wanted to protect the privacy of its employees, then, defendant would not have installed its own video surveillance cameras within the very same limited public fora from which defendant has expelled the plaintiff. See amended complaint, at 47. The ordinance is unreasonable also because of the punishment it imposes upon the violators. The property to which plaintiff was warned not to return for a period of 12 months is described by defendant as the hub of government. See amended complaint, at 34. It serves numerous critical roles and provides public services that all city residents will need from time to time within a 12-month period. See amended complaint, at 20 to 34. For a single violation, the ordinance purports to empower law enforcement to absolutely and unconditionally expel a violator from city property. Remarkably, the ordinance imposes no limit on the amount of time that a violator may be expelled from city property. This is unreasonable, because it is disproportionate to the violation. When plaintiff alleged that the punishment is wildly disproportionate to a violation, amended complaint, at 56, plaintiff was unaware that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit had used identical language to describe other trespass warnings. See Humansky v. Corsons, 396 F.3 D. 53, 93-94, 2D Sir 2005, when a notice Against trespass was issued with virtually no tailoring at all, the efforts of government officials to safeguard the Vermont courts from whatever threat they may have reasonably feared from Humansky were wildly disproportionate to the perceived threat. B. Plaintiff's 14th Amendment claim. The ordinance also violates the 14th Amendment, because it results in the deprivation of plaintiff's liberty without constitutionally adequate procedural protections. In its case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 12 of 20 page ID 185. 13. Motion, defendant argues that, because plaintiff was admittedly violating the ordinance, he had 
no right to be present at City Hall and, therefore, plaintiff had no protected liberty interest in visiting City Hall. Motion, at 6 to 7. A Section 1983 procedural due process claim requires a plaintiff to prove three elements, one, a deprivation of a constitutionally protected liberty or property interest, two, state action, and three, constitutionally inadequate process. Catron v. City of St. Petersburg, 658F.3D. 1260, 1267, 11th Sir 2011, citing Great Envy Roads, 345 F.3D 1225, 1232, 11th Sir 2003. One plaintiff has a constitutionally protected liberty interest in visiting City Hall. Insofar as it is open to the public. In the amended complaint, plaintiff alleges that he has a private liberty interest in lawfully visiting defendant's property that is open to the public. Amended complaint, at 65. Citing Catron, 658F.3D at 1267. Surprisingly, defendant argues that plaintiff has no such protected liberty interest. See motion, at 7. He had no right to be on the property at issue, too. First, defendant seems to argue that the limited public fora that are at issue herein are not open to the public. See motion, at 6, quoting amended complaint, at 65, and emphasizing plaintiff's allegation that the property was open to the public. Defendant suggests that the instant case is entirely distinguishable from Katrin, because the Katrin plaintiff's procedural due process claims arose from trespass warnings issued for a municipality's public parks, which are traditional public fora. C 658F.3D at 1266. Defendant seems to argue that the relevant properties herein cannot at once be considered limited public fora and also open to the public. Two defendant completely ignores the fact that plaintiff was lawfully audio and video recording on December 20, 2018 when he entered the lobby of City Hall, see amended complaint, at EXB. No one else was present in the lobby of City Hall, and therefore, he was not violating the ordinance. At a minimum, the defendant must concede that plaintiff had a liberty interest in entering the lobby of City Hall. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 13 of 20 page ID 186. 14. Once again, defendant is mistaken. Defendant's property can be a limited public forum. While also being open to the public. For example, in Barrett, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals observed that the limited public forum at issue therein was open to the public. C 872. F.3D at 1225, T. He comment sessions are open to the public, but they are not open to the public. At large for discussion of any and all topics. That makes the public comment sessions limited. Public fora. In the instant case, plaintiff has conceded that all of the interior spaces where he audio and video recorded on December 20, 2018 are and were limited public fora, but those spaces are unquestionably open to the public. Even the defendant describes one of the interior spaces, the city clerk's office, as the hub of government, the direct link between the inhabitants of the town and their government. Amended complaint, at 34, quoting, Defendant's own public website 3. Perhaps defendant's protestations would be allayed by simply construing plaintiff's liberty interest as being in visiting defendant's property that is open to the public when plaintiff has a lawful purpose for visiting defendant's property. C. Amended complaint, at 65, Vincent v. City of Sulphur, 
28 f.sub.3 d626 639 wdla 2014 the private interest already discussed is one of liberty and a basic freedom to move about on publicly owned property as any other citizen is legally able to do defendant next argues that any liberty interest that plaintiff had in visiting defendants property was subject to the ordinance's prohibition on audio and video recording and that plaintiffs admitted violation of the ordinance renders any such liberty interest forfeited c motion at 7 quoting katrin 658 f.3d at 1266 and point five a resident of the city has some federal right to use city parks under the ordinary conditions in which these parks are made available to the general public brackets omitted and emphasis in motion 3 http colon slash slash www.ci.punta-gorda.fl.us slash government slash city hyphen clerk case 2 colon 19 cv 00484 spc mrm document 26 filed september 24 19 page 14 of 20 page id 187 15 as for defendants ordinary conditions argument plaintiff's liberty interest in visiting City Hall cannot be curtailed or forfeited by operation of an unconstitutional prohibition on audio and video recording. It is settled by a long line of recent decisions of this court that an ordinance, which, like this one, makes the peaceful enjoyment of freedoms which the Constitution guarantees contingent upon the uncontrolled will of an official as by requiring a permit or license which may be granted or withheld in the Discretion of such official is an unconstitutional censorship or prior restraint upon the enjoyment of those freedoms. Stog v. City of Baxley, 355 U.S. 313, 322, 78 S.C.T. 277, 282, 2 L.Ed. 2 D. 302. And our decisions have made clear that a person faced with such an unconstitutional licensing law may ignore it and engage with impunity in the exercise of the right of free expression for which the law purports to require a license. The Constitution can hardly be thought to deny to one subjected to the restraints of such an ordinance the right to attack its constitutionality, because he has not yielded to its demands. Shuttlesworth v. City of Birmingham, Allah 394 U.S. 147, 151, 394 S.C.T. 935, 938 to 39, 22 L.Ed. 2D. 162, 1969. Even assuming arguendo that defendant has validly proscribed audio and video recording within City Hall plaintiff had a liberty interest in visiting those properties, subject to the proscription. While Katrin concerned a liberty interest in visiting traditional public fora, other cases have recognized protected liberty interests in visiting various limited public fora. See, example, Kennedy v. City of Cincinnati, 595 f.3 d 327, 6 sir 2010, liberty interest found in visiting publicly owned pool whose access was available only to those who had purchased pool passes it was clear that kennedy had a liberty interest to remain in a public place of his choice and that defendants interfered with this interest citing city of chicago v morales 527 us 41 54 119 S.C.T. 1849, 144 L.Ed. 2D. 67, 1999, City of Sulphur, 28 F.Sub.3D at 639, Private Liberty. Interest found in visiting public parks, attending governmental meetings, conducting business at the assessor's office or the office of motor vehicles, visiting polling stations on election days, or going swimming at the community pool. 
Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 15 of 20 page ID and 88. 16. The parties disagree about the scope and extent of the liberty interest at stake, but to satisfy the first element of the procedural due process claim, plaintiff need only identify a private liberty interest. Plaintiff has identified a valid, private liberty interest and, therefore, satisfied the first element of the claim. Two state action is involved. It is beyond dispute that defendant is a government actor and that, therefore, due process is needed. See Katrin, 658F.3D at 1267. 3. Plaintiff was provided no process. In light of the fact that plaintiff has identified a private liberty interest, and that state action is involved, this court must determine whether the ordinance provides the constitutionally adequate process that is due. ID. To determine whether the ordinance satisfies the constitutional requirement of procedural due process, we apply the Matthews balancing test. Identification of the specific dictates of due process generally requires consideration of three distinct factors, first, the private interest that will be affected by the official action, second, the risk of an erroneous deprivation of such interest through the procedures used, and the probable value, if any, of additional or substitute procedural safeguards, and finally, the government's interest, including the function involved and the fiscal and administrative Burdens that the additional or substitute procedural requirement would entail. 96S.CT at 903. Catron v. City of St. Petersburg, 658F.3D 1260, 1267, 11th Sir 2011, citing Matthews v. Eldridge, 424 US 319. 96s.ct893, 47l.ed2d18, 1976. The Matthews test requires a pre-deprivation hearing, if not a post-deprivation hearing. ID at 1266. The due process clause requires that a deprivation of life, liberty or property be preceded by notice and opportunity for hearing appropriate to the Nature of the case. Cleveland BD of EDUC v. Loudermill, 470 U.S. 532, 105. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 16 of 20 page ID 189. 17. S.CT 1487, 1493, 84L.ed2D 494, 1985, quoting Mullane v. CENT Hanover Bank and Trust Co., 339 U.S. 306, 70S.CT 652, 656, 94L.ed. 865, 1950. The government must provide the required notice and opportunity for a hearing at a meaningful time and in a meaningful manner, although the notice and hearing may be postponed until after the deprivation has occurred. See Matthews v. Eldridge, 424 U.S. 319, 96S.CT 893, 902. 47L.ed2D18, 1976. ID at 1266. In Katrin, the 11th Circuit engaged in Matthews' analysis of a municipal ordinance. One that empowered law enforcement officers to issue trespass warnings for publicly owned public property, without a pre- or post-deprivation hearing. In Katrin, the 11th Circuit concluded that the ordinance lacked constitutionally adequate procedural protections. ID at 1269. 
the 11th Circuit is not alone. Other federal courts have similarly struck down or prohibited such ordinances or practices. C. Example City of Sulphur, 28F. Sub.3 D at 639, due process. Violation found where plaintiff had been trespassed from all city property without being given an opportunity to have his deprivation reviewed by the judiciary or by a neutral or impartial hearing body or officer, Sir V. Addison Rudland Supervisory Union, 60F.3D 536, 552 53. DVT 2014, Notices Against Trespass Violated Mr. Sears' Due Process Rights by Depriving Him of His First Amendment Right to Express His Views at School Board Meetings Without Adequate Process, Stevens v. School City of Hobart, Case 2 13 CV 336 PRC, 2015 WL 487-0789, at asterisk 14. Asterisk 15, NDIND August 6, 2015, engaging in Matthew's analysis and denying the defendant's motion. For summary judgment as to plaintiff's due process claim, accord right v. City of St. Petersburg. Case No. 8, 13 CV 2784 TEKEP, 2014 WL 727 3946, at asterisk 3, MDFLA December 19, 2014. Wright's challenge to the ordinance fails because he was given a hearing at a meaningful time and in a meaningful manner. Wright appealed the trespass warning and was given a hearing before the independent hearing master. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 17 of 20 page ID 190. 18. In its motion, defendant essentially argues that no pre or post deprivation hearing was necessary, because plaintiff has admitted to violating the ordinance recording ban. There is no authority for this argument and defendant cites none. In fact, other than Katrin, the only case cited by defendant in its due process arguments is Worthy v. City of Phoenix, Allah, 930F.3D, 1206-1223, 11th Sir 2019, a case involving red light camera traffic citations. In rejecting the Plaintiff's procedural due process claim, the 11th Circuit observed, a citation recipient does not have to pay anything to challenge the citation at an administrative hearing. ID, at 1223. If the city of Punta Gorda had provided constitutionally adequate safeguards, plaintiff could have raised a First Amendment defense and other affirmative defenses during a due process hearing. Additionally, plaintiff would have argued alternatively that the length of the trespass warning should be reduced, so that plaintiff's punishment would be proportionate to the alleged offense. Plaintiff was entitled to such a due process hearing, but defendant's ordinance does not provide for one, and in any event, defendant refused to provide plaintiff one, even after plaintiff requested a hearing. For conclusion. Plaintiff has a protected liberty interest in visiting the hub of his local government, to vote, to attend city council meetings, and slash or to obtain information about what his local government is doing. Defendant has deprived the plaintiff of this liberty interest without due process. At a minimum, viewing the factual allegations of the amended complaint in the light. Most favorable to the plaintiff, Plaintiff has stated a plausible claim for relief in count 2. For request for oral argument. Pursuant to local rule 3.01, J, plaintiff respectfully requests a one hour hearing for oral argument on defendant's motion. Case 2 colon 19 CV 00484 SBC MRM document 26 filed September 24, 19 page 18 of 20 page ID 191. 19. V. Conclusion. Wherefore, 
Plaintiff Andrew B. Sheets respectfully requests the entry of an order. Denying defendant's motion to dismiss amended complaint, document 25, and providing such other. And further relief as this honorable court deems just and proper. Dated September 24, 2019. The Bondarud Law Firm. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Copwatch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube. And uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.